Welcome back to No Man's Land, everybody. <laughs> what to do, baby boo? What up, everybody? It's Welcome Ethan, to No Man's Land. It's Ethan Shiting and Braden Beard back in the his house. You know what it is. What up? We're here. Listen, we we were just saying something before we started recording, and I kind of want to talk about it. All right, it's pro. You know, hot topic. All right, it's hot, hot topic. It's a hot topic, not the emo store, just a genuinely hot topic. Nicotine, right? Mm-hmm. Now. I'm going to share something personal about myself. We all know this, but the audience doesn't because they don't you don't you don't know shit about you me. You really don't know anything about least, us. About, Not yet, about me. Well, that's well, that's why we're here. All right. Mm. I got addicted to nicotine at age 14. 14. It's pretty young. That's so fucking young. I didn't even realize how young that was until I got older. And I was like, wow, I feel like that's just kind of how that works, though, as you get older and then you're like, yeah, younger people are younger. We all make mistakes, man. And but dude, it's like once I got hooked there, I I could not quit. I, I was I for years I have been hooked on fucking vaping and because I didn't like cigarettes. Cigarettes are gross unless you're. Mm, they're all right I, I wouldn't i don't think i would personally smoke a cigarette sober but that's also why so, i don't like to drink <laughs> yeah i like to smoke cigarettes yeah so i remember the first well, time i remember I the know. first time you told me that you smoked a cigarette because we were in high school and you just got off your shift at you were working at a, the bar in town yeah and you called and you're like yeah i had a pretty good day at work i smoked a cigarette um and i was like what and you're like, yeah, man. And I, I was like all fucking worried for you. I was like, you just start smoking. Is this like a thing now? Um, so it was nice. And I, I don't know. I just like I'd always seen them and I always smell and I always thought they smelled terrible. And I and I've always also grown up with like a lot of like, I guess, uh, I don't know, like a lot of people smoked. Yeah, like, it was a big thing like 20 years ago, like. It they, just looks so cool. It does look pretty. I got it. It does look pretty cool. I, it, it does, but man, um, the cancer. Yeah, it'll it, get you. It, yeah, it got it got my grandpa. So, yeah. and that. It, see, I see that, and I'm like, okay, I probably shouldn't smoke. But then I also was like, what's all the hype about? What's all the hype about, man? <laughs> what's like, all the hype about going on with this? I mean, <laughs> and I'm like, I, it can't get me with one cigarette. I'm like, man, I kind of want to smoke another fucking cigarette. I'm just smoking that one. I'm like, goddamn, this is pretty awesome. I know. Next thing you know, you've ran through it, four packs. At that point, at that point, I also had already been vaping. Yeah. And so I forgot that you used to vape. Oh, yeah. I used to have a big. I, yeah, I had a problem with vaping at one yeah, point. I was a. I. I. I feel like I was a bad. I was a bad influence. I mean, yeah, you were just like, I don't care. I'm gonna keep in this. You. You. You just quit. I just. So yeah. Here, can you tell yeah, your story yeah, yeah, about yeah. you vaping. I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. Thank you. I, fucking. Um. So I was vaping for probably since I was like six, like sixteen, maybe. No, no, no. It was probably seventeen years old. I, I didn't get onto it like that. Like, I swear you would have been because if I started when I was 14, I was probably 16 at the time. Yeah, probably like 16 or 17. That's when I started like vaping. And like, um, I, I was vaping for a long time. And then when I got up to be like 19 or 20, I was just like, fuck. Like it was fucking up my lungs. I was coughing. It is the thought of it now. Just makes yeah. me gag. You know, it, oh God, it was terrible. So then I, so then I just cut it off and I, I felt like shit. I was coughing all the time. Yeah. Lugs. The lugs, man. The loogies. The fucking the snot and shit. It's awful. I hated it. But now. Well, I, it's not snot. It's <laughs> fluid from your lungs clearing out because you're not continually shoving shit down. Yeah. So I literally just quit like a little over a month ago. Maybe two. I don't even know how long it's been now. But I didn't quit nicotine, but I quit vaping. That's and great. Because I switched to Zins, because Zins are fucking awesome. They are just, okay, here's my thing, is like, it's great because it lets me moderate to my level, right? Yeah. With vaping, I was vaping, You, I mean, you saw it all the time, 24-7. I would wake up, rip it, go to bed, like, every, throughout the day. There was never a moment that I didn't have it, and if I couldn't find it, I was geeking. So, straight geeking. Dude, now I switched to Zins, which was nice because it let me just full on stop vaping and get it out of my system completely. At least like the the habit of consistently like putting it up to my mouth and, you know, uh, now I started at the highest six milligrams, whatever. And I was taking two, three, four, 
five, <laughs> a day, uh, a day, like a day yeah. in the beginning. And over the course of the last like month and a half, two months, I've weaned down. And now I'm down to the threes. I'm down to like one or two a day, maybe. Some there are days that I just don't take one, but now it's just turned into more like a treat. Now it's just like a like you just like it as like a little, like just a little funsy. Yeah, like I don't feel like I feel like vaping. I felt like it had like a fucking stranglehold on me, and I just couldn't escape. Zins are more like a just a buddy that's there for you. And if you want to have some fun, you want to just get like a little focused, a little energized, a little a little bit of a, a little nicotine, kick. a little bit of a kick. You know, Zins are there for you. They're nice. So I also tried some of the off brand Zins. Fucking suck, dude. I'm a Zin rider die. Fair enough. Like I, I guess yeah. I, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of like packets and stuff. You know, I obviously also haven't tried a Zin. Yeah, but that's just because you want to. No, not really. <laughs> you want? <laughs> no, I just I don't know. Nicotine's never been my bag. No, I now get that. I'm that. off of it now. I'm just like I I feel better. I yeah, feel, I just feel. Ugh, Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I feel better as I start like <laughs> coughing. I'm one of eighteen. I feel fuck? so much better. <laughs> Ugh, I got another vice. <laughs> oh my god. My, my I'm just, I, I my like me personally. I'm just like I like weed. That's yeah. all I do. And then I also drink a lot of caffeine. I that actually here, dude. I want to talk about this. Fuck yes, I will talk about soda. This. It's, Let's talk about soda. Holy shit. You want to talk about something I am for. I am more addicted to soda than I ever was the nicotine. Like that is real. Like it's it's just I, I love it's it so, so much. Fucking I love good. it. I love soda. But like it's so bad man, for you. It's, it's so bad. Yeah, it's very bad for you. And like what can do it for you. It, it's it's going to all the caffeine hurt your heart heart condition like it's just not even not, not even, even just the caffeine. It's the other stuff that's in you can get diabetes, dude. But oh my god it's, it's so, fucked up also i want to know how much of that like terribleness in the soda industry is just in america there was a video i saw online where it was a bunch of uk kids mm-hmm. and they were reacting to american sodas and one of them was mountain dew and they were all flabbergasted they were like what the fuck is this dude <laughs> dude they were like what is this like fucking what is this? And apparently in every other country, Mountain Dew doesn't fall in. Like you have to label it as like fucking dangerous. <laughs> dude, it's like fucking it's so, radioactive. It's fucking. It glows, It's dude. green. <laughs> it's like the most green. It's like. Also, did you know that I think it's orange? Yeah, orange Fanta. Did you know that in every other country, it does not look like how it looks in America? Probably because they're using like real oranges. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like we're using some other shit. What the fuck is ours? It looks like someone pissed neon orange. Dude, it's so bad. <laughs> I love orange Fanta too, dude. I, uh, real. Orange uh, Fanta is a orange soda. Uh, I, I'm not a big orange soda guy. Really? No. Uh, I just my, I will the one soda that I it, I okay. It is Mountain Dew, but it's like complicated. Right. So here's a here's a little tip for you. If you guys want something that you can if you guys want a drink that you can have that will just make you happy, it'll just fill you with joy. Primarily, if you like Mountain Dew Baja Blast, you know this. We've lived yeah. together for like five, six months now. I'm sure you've seen me drink one of these sodas almost every night. I have. It's fucking what it what it is, is it's like 60 percent Mountain Dew. 40% blue Powerade. Dude, greatest thing on the planet. It's fucking delicious. It is so... F- it's it's made me not like Baja Blast as much because it's That's better. That's so weird. I know. Man, Baja is really taking note. I feel like Baja itself... Honestly, I'm going to say it. Like, mm-hmm. we're gonna, we should tier these sodas. Ooh. Baja, for sure, is S tier. Ooh, I have an idea. Aiden, go ahead and pull up the list of Mountain Dews for us. List them off, and then I wanted to start. Let's rank each one, like not with not in order, mm-hmm. just like out of ten. Like in Baja itself, S tier. That's an S tier for S-tier. sure. S tier, or it's we delicious. can tier them. We can do that. We'll tier them. They made it. It was just for Taco Bell, and then yeah. everyone was just like, "I'm going to Taco Bell just for Baja," and they're like, "Fuck it, we can make more money, dude." And now they just manufacture it in bottles, and well, you people drink the shit out of it. For a while, it was a summer thing. Yeah, I remember a while ago 
when it was there was a whole vote between it was Mountain Dew Baja Blast and fuck what was it? Uh, I think it was pitch black. Pitch black. That's what it was. It was some grape pitch flavor. Black. Yeah, and it was everyone had to vote which soda was going to be kept like not seasonal, like kept mm-hmm. year round. And pitch black won. It was ridiculous because I don't think Baja was as like socially massive as it was because I feel like once TikTok popped off, I feel like that's when Gen Z kind of started getting a voice in the zeitgeist of the internet. I feel that. And I feel like that's kind of the demographic that was obsessed with Baja Blast. So I feel like that's kind of what made that kick. Yeah. God, this is fun. We have such great conversations I know. on here. It's all, I, I like, like, and so hey. so cool. Such hey. a cool convo. Like, what a great conversation, right? Now. <laughs> Sorry, I. <laughs> one of my many like character flaws in conversation that I feel like is going to be a problem in a podcast is I love quoting like movies, shows, and comedians that I love. I mean, I love it. So you know, Violet, like, hopefully, you guys love it. Yeah, thank you, audience, for being here and see, hearing these fun combos and like right now we're talking about like just such a like okay how, i think it's interesting i like hold on how far hold back on. soda goes here. i like how we were like soda's fucking terrible for you aiden pull up all the mountain dews so we can say which is our favorite <laughs> <coughs> what are you doing over there speaking mm-hmm. of Ooh, all right i was eating peanuts and i had some, like shit in my mouth <laughs> okay yeah. not shit I, straight, straight <laughs> it was like the you membrane. eat pieces of shit for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> name that movie yeah I, tell us in the comments that quote where that movie's from or whatever fuck you <laughs> you no. know what i go ahead to all the people you know we we put out a we put out a clip and we say hey ask some questions not a single question yeah well maybe we should we maybe we should have phrased the video better maybe we should orchestrate it you're right so but that you know what what we can do is we can rank these mountain dews because i'm yeah. actually pretty excited to put these in a tier oh. list what you got aiden all right original mountain dew i'm fucking f <sighs> I mean, you use it. Okay. Oh, but you just use it for the Mountain Dew part. Yeah, just because then once you mix the Powerade in, then it like completely flavors it different. And that's weird. It is weird. <laughs> that is strange that I hate normal Mountain Dew, but like when it's flavored, it's great. Can we at least give it, okay, actually, can we just at least give it a D? I can give it a D for the bubble gum fucking, there's a bubble gum. Yeah, okay, called, like, D, red. I can, get, that's fair. I'm cool with a D, Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, valid. Uh, Baja Blast. S. 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 Yeah. Easy, Easy S here. Like, just amazing. Uh, overdrive. Which Ooh. one's that? Uh, what color? Is that? It's oh. purple, I believe. Oh, wait, no. Overdrive's the one that's, uh. Is that the one that's at Casey's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's one. delicious. I like that one. Let's. I don't know. If, yes, well, it is the Casey's. Specific. Yeah. I, Let's give it a C. I don't um, think I can give it a C. I would put it higher. Like, uh, that is. Maybe? Mm, I would go S or A. Have you had Overdrive? I, ha- I just don't get it that often. It's not oh, my favorite. I, only, I get it when I'm going to Casey's. I'm there, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I would put it in A. A? I think, I, I think it's a good A tier. Major Melon. I, mm. I, I have had that one. I put that at like a C. I put that at C. I don't think C. it's... It's not like it's not yeah. as bad or worse than regular Mountain Dew, but it's not like... <laughs> it's Yeah, it's just kind of... If I need something to cleanse my palate, like if I just had something bad and it happens to be there, I'll drink it. Like regular Mountain Dew, I won't even like D tier is probably where it cuts off on the I don't even think I would want to drink that. So the, like there has to be specific circumstances like with the regular Mountain so Dew, you eat like a I, bad piece of chicken and you're like, ugh, and they're like, ooh, some major melon. No, <laughs> that's the one circumstance that we drink major melon is when we have bad chicken. <laughs> C tier. <laughs> C yeah, C tier. All right, cool. Frostbite. Uh, well, what what flavor is Walmart exclusive? Um it's supposed to be kind of melony too, I guess. I like the color. I'd say B tier. Um was that the was, that wasn't the bomb pop flavor, was it? No, that's um red, white, and dew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I would put that in like B or A tier. The red, white, I, and blue I never, one. I never had that one. That one was good. I, I liked it. Mention that though. I don't see this on see that one on this list i know my mountain dews it's so yeah like there's so many mountain dews there are so many mountain dews well okay so this is wait where would you put coke 
Coke? I'm actually wearing my soda shirt right now. You are now. wearing your soda shirt. <laughs> Jesus, we were ripping so hard into how terrible soda is, and then we're just like, I love it so much. <laughs> it's probably, okay, well, I'm going to be honest. Like, that's, I found myself. We're like two crackheads smoking crack, being like, dude, this crack is terrible for us. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> this shit is awesome. Um, fucking... Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm wearing my Coke shirt right now, as I'm saying all this yeah. shit. And I For do Spotify love- users, Coca-Cola, <laughs> not cocaine. <laughs> and fuck, <laughs> um, it's so good, but it is horrible for you. And I've started to wean off of like soda as much. Like I do drink it. Yeah. But I only use it right now. I've been trying to only treat it as like a treat. Yeah. It's something I can have at the end of the night, maybe. Like it's like a glass of wine instead, yeah. of, instead of having some Coca Cola. I don't drink wine. I don't yeah. like wine. Hot take. This is my hot take. You know this hot take. I don't like drinking. Yeah. Neither do I, really. I, it's so. I like, mean, I like it on special occasions. It's exhausting. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. I have to like plan the next day around it. Like, yeah. It's like, ah. So it. it, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't go to work. No. Hungover it is the worst. Just, you feel bleh. You, everything hurts. It's so terrible for you. Uh, it's like. Yeah. So, I mean, as we're drinking soda and doing Zins though. I mean, yeah. I'll take soda and Zins over alcohol. For real though. Like, it's such a, oh man, it is fun though. Like, I like. I like the idea of like drinking at a wedding. That's fun. Yeah. Also drinking at like birthdays. Aiden's got a 21st coming oh, up. Oh shit. So we're going to be drinking. Your 21st for, is coming up. You're going to be drinking for the first time. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah Aiden, definitely you're going to the first time. I've dude, you're going to be drinking 100%. for the first time in your life. Yeah. I've never, uh, I've never even had a sip of beer before. guys. Dude, you might die. So, oh yeah. my God. What, what, if, what if I'm allergic to alcohol? Oh my God, dude. I want to show you a good time dude holy shit have you even seen a beer before <laughs> no dude i don't even know what it smells like precisely especially blue moon no no idea what it smells like dos Equis, no fucking clue what that is damn i'm Never surprised you can even pronounce those words <laughs> anyway <laughs> 21st coming up so that's the only time i find myself wanting to drink and yeah, like as a celebration. Yeah, as exactly. That, I do think that's okay. Like I think, like in celebrate. I just, I, I couldn't be an alcoholic. Yeah, dude. Like, oh god, that'd be terrible. It would just that would suck. You, I feel like you just hurt all the time, dude. And then you just keep. Well, then you just keep numbing. I get it now. <laughs> I okay. <laughs> circle. Yeah, I was like, circle. I was like, wouldn't you just be in pain? And I was like, well, I guess you're drinking, and then that. Not, oh, okay, all right, yeah, for sure. Oh my, it, it's a gnarly vice, man. It is, but hey, at least it's not PCP. <laughs> yeah. at, least, at least, you know, at least. But, <laughs> if anything, you wouldn't feel numb. You would just, actually, yeah. Let's do a drug tier list. Pull them up. <laughs> Speaking of tier lists, we no, fuck the fuck the Mountain Dew. We're <laughs> we don't need to promote these evil companies anymore. That's true. Like as much as like they are delicious and stuff, they are just like man, these drugs are great. Yeah, dude. Curiosity. How do you like last one? How do you how do you feel about Code Red? B tier, B tier, B tier. I'm comfortable too. Now that I have Ooh, S, A. I would say mm, a. Okay. that's a, a plus. Good takes. I can say A plus. A plus. I, I would say it's a high A. That's a, uh, uh, code red. A plus. Voltage S tier. Yeah, okay. it, fair Those enough. Those are the three best mountains: nah. Baja Blast, Code Red, Voltage. Well, it's good. We gotta, we gotta good. end up getting you a camera and a, and a microphone. We gotta end up doing that. It'll happen one day when we get money. If you guys wanna, here's the. If you guys want to help us. We'll probably get a Patreon going. At We're some gonna get point. a Patreon going at some point. I'm excited. I'm excited. By the way, we have a name for the community now. We talk. Well, I d- I forgot. Oh, it's. <laughs> I was like, I came up with the idea, and I guess I ran it by you, and you said it was cool. So now I think that we're doing that. So the No Man's Land crew, because we've never talked about this. What up, crew? Our show is technically pirate themed. <laughs> Are <laughs> like we don't do like we, <laughs> we're not we, are we <laughs> we don't do pirate shit we'll have to do a pirate episode for episode 100 we'll go all out pirate theme yeah <laughs> but <laughs> oh, no God. it's like the whole like 
the branding, I guess, like the logo is like, you know, the pirate's emblem emblem and no man's land. Cause it's like, you know, we're exploring into an uncharted territory. We're going to the note. We're finding the no man's land of conversation where no yeah, man has gone before. Exactly. Like that's what I, that is what's so special about this podcast. I know. Like that's because we talk about everything. I, I don't think I could, I could do like a specified podcast about one topic, but only because I have this podcast mm-hmm. to talk about anything. Yeah. Like this is like this is a very cool zone, and you know, and like we can bring in like anyone on. Like, I know we can bring on any single person. Like uh, six nine, six nine, or Diddy, Diddy. Yeah. Why would we get Diddy on? Here? I don't know, dude. I think he's. I hear he's up to some interesting stuff, and I'd like to ask him about it. <laughs> <laughs> setting up traps. Yeah, setting up traps. Probably. Chris Hansen is asking. He's probably. Gonna we could totally. Are we gonna Chris Hansen Diddy? <laughs> Wait, take what? a seat wait who's chris hansen you don't know who chris hansen Mm-mm. take to take a seat a predator? to catch a predator oh that guy yeah the guy who catches all the pedophiles <laughs> one is that is that what he does person. yeah so that's like his that's like his whole thing i've actually never really watched i've watched clips of the show really Re- well i guess okay i now that i think about it i don't know that i've ever seen an episode of the show either but i watch a lot of clips <laughs> Yeah, that's what's so great about this information age of TikTok and shit in the short. Mm-hmm. Like, we're all watching clips. It's nice. Well, it's nice because you get to watch a lot of stuff without having to like. You get to get a lot of tastes. Yeah. A lot of ta- like it lets you really figure out what you're into. It's very true. Because instead, because like sometimes you're like, I don't want to watch a movie because you know it's a big investment. But then you see a clip and you're like, oh, well that looks cool, and I feel like that would interest me. So then you go like, it lets you, it lets yeah. you diversify your interests. That's actually kind of, like, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, like, it'll show you clips of just, like, important things that maybe you want to learn. I do watch a lot of informational stuff. Like, when the information stuff comes up, you're like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Like, I'm learning, like, new, like, they're like, you try these chords. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I go, and afterwards, I go look it up. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And, like, it's it's pretty awesome. There's this one account I follow. I don't know the name of it, so I can't shout it out or anything. Mm-hmm. But it's the entire page is just explaining how the entire world works. Like, every video is, like, a different explanation of some mechanic in the world. Like, whether it be an invention or something in nature or an animal or a time lapse of something. Like, it's super interesting, but I just love learning shit. Like, I am such a curious person. Me too. Like, I... It... It's just... Like, I like learning about history and stuff like that. And, like, how yeah. shit, like, worked, like... And, like, how... What led up to it and what happened. And, like, how we've evolved from it. And just, like, that happens so much in history. Yeah. I like, I think, like, the Revolutionary War. Like, I like learning about, like, us as America and, like, how we started. Like, we were just pissed off about taxes. We were, dude. Now, look Now, to be, to be fair, though... Well, real as fuck. I don't we got too political last episode. I don't want to get as political as we did last episode. Let's keep this episode light. But uh, on the topic of the Revolutionary War, like that was some crazy shit because that they just had like a king and queen and no like normal person had any say in what happened, but they still had to pay money for it. So like I get that. That is kind of how it goes now. But yep. you, you know what? We're not going to talk about it. You guys can think get, about it. And yeah. we're all thinking about it. But uh, I will say we're talking about history. And that may actually made me think of the movie The Holdovers. That is, hands down, if you have not seen The Holdovers, it's on Such Peacock. Such a good movie. It is. It, it was my number one movie of 2023. I'm excited to watch it next Christmas. Like, I, it, Christmas? Oh, yeah. Totally a Christmas. It is a Great new Christmas. yearly Christmas movie for me, for sure. So good. So, But it tells such an interesting story because for, if you don't know about the holdovers, the entire movie is shot as if it was in 1973, maybe the 70, 70s? 79, 70, it's, it's some point in the 70s. And the entire movie was shot that like it looks as if you just it it literally looks like a 1980s movie like you you have to watch it to get what I mean but it literally looks like it came from that time period and it was advertised as such too. all of the commercials were like 1970s commercials Mm -hmm. and I will say that's also like I, I, the one thing I do not like about the whole yeah. universe is the, their trailer. I don't think the trailer does the movie justice at all. No, and it like, doesn't. It, and not saying it's bad. It's just like. <sighs> it's not what we usually see today. Yeah. So it's it's kind of out of the normal zeitgeist. It's out of the. what I've been using that word a lot. I like it, though. It's a great word. Yeah. It's just like sometimes you. I, I, not, I didn't just learn what it means because I know yeah, some yeah, people I like. You. I've heard you say it before. Yeah. I was, yeah. Like, I was going to say like. Like. 
I don't know. I, cool. I just catch myself using a word and then I'm like, oh, I like that word. And then I use the word a lot, but then I feel like it makes me look stupid. So I don't know. Yeah. But the holdovers, the entire movie, it takes place in the 70s. But the narration of the movie is this teacher and this kid who goes to school there and they both have a lot of internal issues and they're a lot more similar than they think. But the narrative is kind of showing the idea that every the, the quote in the movie is every generation thinks that they invented uh, degenerate debauchery or something like that. Yeah. And it's basically every generation thinks that they are the most crazy, that they're pushing the line and then they get older and then it, the cycle repeats itself. Yeah. And it's super just because that really is the case. It's it's a very interesting how like we evolve as a like more and more time goes on like I I, I don't know like know, humans are interesting we have a lot of like animalistic natures but we do I feel like we do evolve in that way like we kind of like we do better we just keep yeah. doing better and like that's great and we always got to try to keep pushing to do better like I, I have so much faith in yeah humanity like you know like they're horrible people yeah. there are horrible people out there yeah but at the same time they there's more good people though oh yeah that's no, the big th- that's great but the, no one writes a news story about like just an average joe good person though yeah and that's the majority of people maybe because like it is going on so much we know about it and like that's what i maybe like why like news stations newspapers mm. blogs whatever youtube channels like they always try to find like an interesting story and usually it has to involve someone who's probably like not great yeah so well that's because what get what gets the clicks but that's mm. what i love about this podcast is i love that we can be that source of we're not gonna we're not gonna get in the bullshit and plus we believe in a better future yeah, so dude. if if you feel hopeless just watch this, I guess, because we're going to yeah. we'll hopefully we can spark a little bit of hope in you. Yeah. Maybe like, for real. Like we totally could do that for everybody. I think we could. I think because, we like could. I have so much hope for humanity. Like I like we talk like the news and that's the thing. Like the news is pushed into us. But regardless of that. Yeah. It's just I hope I have a lot of faith in humanity because I feel like people all really do care about each other in the end. Like we like to think that like some people might feel a little selfish and also just, I don't know. Motivated by their own self-interest. But in the end, I feel like most people will feel a sense of humanity when they look at everybody else. Sometimes there's, yeah. there, there's always that moment. So, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I do. <laughs> Let's get off the heavy subject. Yeah, this is heavy Let, as hell. Let's bring up something else that we did talk about last episode that is not as heavy. Let's talk about Son of the Mask. The, oh, oh, the really? sequel to the Jim Carrey movie, The Mask. Yeah. Uh, I have the mask. We do have the mask. Cool. It doesn't work. It doesn't. Which is pretty bummy. It's fine. We've tried. It looks cool, though. It does look cool. It's actually like a phenomenal replica. Yeah. But Son of the Mask, we watched it, and I gave you my rating. I had never seen it before. And for give the context on the general opinion of this so, movie, because you're the one that told me about this yes. in the first place. So for for one thing, I'm I, I love the first movie the most. It is awesome. I've watched it since I was like a little kid, and it's just been a big part of my life. And I always liked, I always like cartoons. Like I've always been a big cartoon fan and like they do a lot of like Tex Avery type stuff and like an evolution of CGI back in like 1994. That's really cool. Yeah. And so liking that, I also have a, a connection to like the series. Like it's a comic and it's a very brutal, intense comic. If you haven't read the mass comic, you totally should. But it's fucking crazy what they do. But anyways, there's a sequel to the first movie. And it, it's just it's it's hard to live up to a movie when it doesn't have the original actors. Actor. Yes. Yeah. It makes it very difficult to do that. And that, that's, I think, where a lot of hate gets put into this movie of why people don't like it. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest it is problem like we talk about movies that are overhated here. Yeah, this is one of them, dude. Okay, all right. This are you is ready? One of them. Are you? We watched it. I mm-hmm. I had never seen it before, so this is my first take, honest opinion. I gave it a six point five. To be honest, 
I think I could even go seven, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at the reviews. The reviews are like less than one star to two star. Like it's bad. Like Like the reviews are awful. It's horrible. Now, I really enjoyed the movie. I will. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a fun, goofy, silly movie that was real, it, it, visually really cool. Actually, I think I you were giving some shit to the mask animation, saying yeah. that it was worse. I actually liked it. Really? Yeah. I was like, I thought that like all of the animation looked really great. The dog in that movie, I loved the dog. Dude, yes, the dog is so funny in that movie. <laughs> like they, like it's like they got to do what they wanted to do with the first one, but they got to like really push it. In this yeah. One. Oh my god, it's awesome. The baby looked freaky as hell. Yeah. That was just uncanny valid. But like, hey, now here's my take on why I think people hate it, and I do get it because I will say. <laughs> It took me a minute to fuck with the movie. For the first like 20 minutes, half an hour, I was like, oh boy. Because I will say, the writing is pretty terrible. It is not great. It is not great. But here's the thing. It's not written like a Hollywood movie. It is written like a cartoon. It is written like an old school slapstick, Tom and Jerry-esque, like just focused on the comedy cartoon. Yeah. And that's what I think is really interesting because when we're watching a movie, we expect to see real, like not real people, but like, you know, some sort of reflection of real life. Mm -hmm. This is a live action movie. So we're expecting that, but we're getting these completely fictional, not at all realistic people. Like the main dude does, he's he's (laughs) such a fucking, holy shit. That guy is a fucking tool. (laughs) Just, it's wild. But... (laughs) I'm sorry. It's just, if you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about, man. It's his writing is abysmal. <laughs> He's very interesting. Oh my god, his mask is weird. Yeah, dude. I it's just like I do think it's interesting that the the mask does play into it, but well, I guess it is son of the mask. But like the main, the guy with the mask, the dude who's wearing the mask and does the thing, like he's a very small part of the movie, actually. Yeah, I know. Like, he, well, so I'm gonna be honest. He has okay. So this guy, his name is uh, fuck, uh, Jamie Kennedy. Uh-huh. That's the guy. Who, that's the guy who played the main character. Yeah, he put out a whole series on his YouTube channel. Like it was like maybe like two years ago, mm-hmm. maybe not two years ago, maybe like one year ago, of him talking about the like what happened with that movie really it dude it goes into a deep dive of what happened and like he was so this was a movie that was shot in australia and he normally shot i guess in his home mm-hmm. and they had a lot of issues there they had also had a lot of issues with the writing and also just because they didn't they, obviously because he was filling the shoes like it's hard to fill those shoes of that first movie yeah because it's jim carrey yeah and he even talked to jim carrey jim carrey was like he was like hey man i'm playing this role like if you need, he told him like, if you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. Yeah. And Jim Carrey's like, no, go do it. Just, like, go do it. It'll be awesome. Have a fun time. And yeah. And he was talking about like, and so he did it and the movie, it just, pe- pe- it, people didn't connect with it. Yeah. And, but as a sequel, as a sequel to the film, the first film. Yeah. I think it does a really great job uh, in some. Okay. I don't know that it's. It's hard to say that it's It's hard to say great job. No, because I feel like sequel implies continuation of the story. And when people hear that, they think that it means continuation of the story of Jim Carrey's character. But what it really is, is a continuation of the story of the mask. And it tells the story about Loki getting it back. (laughs) Whoa, that's a whole other thing, dude. <laughs> dude, there's a Loki variant in the movie. Okay. Dude, there technically speaking, there is a Loki variant in Son of the Mask. It's like it's like they took inspiration. I would say they I 100% think the Marvel crew took inspiration from this movie. I don't th- no, I no. think so. I don't I don't think that's the case at all. Bit. I don't at all. Not in the <laughs> Not slightest. At all. No. Uh. So, I mean, because I feel like if they did, Loki would be a lot more cartoony in the Marvel universe. But we also have to remember Loki is is not cartoony, (laughs) not not as cartoony as he is in Son of the Mask. You know that scene where the kid in Son of the Mask is like flat, fucking like hitting his dad everywhere on the couches. Kind of like how Hulk was doing. That's Loki. Yeah, but (laughs) uh, 
<laughs> okay, maybe. Although, again, that, okay, no, no, no. I bet they totally took inspiration from this movie. I, I, dude, here's why, bro. I think a lot of people were really excited to see this movie, and then they were let down. It feels like a fucking straight to DVD movie. Yeah. But I really liked it. I loved it as a cartoon. I loved the concept of the whole like dog versus baby. That was really yeah. fucking funny. It was also hilarious just watching the guy lose his mind because that's the entire plot of the movie is just this dog and this baby trying to get the attention from the dad while the dad is just losing his mind because no one will believe that these crazy things are happening and it it really is hysterical the baby and the dog are just gaslighting the dad (laughs) the whole movie like and I think that's so cool. Like they took that con like they literally took the inspiration from like the ragtime frog or whatever. Yeah. And like Hello, my baby. And so Hello, the baby was like, honey. Oh, I'm gonna do that to my dad to get him put away in a psych hospital. Like, yeah, dude. The baby was plotting, dude. Like and then the dog was trying to save the dad by killing the baby. But like <laughs> the dog didn't know any better. It was just like, I'm gonna kill that baby. So that that, that is dog logic, to yeah. be fair. <laughs> that is straight dog logic. I will say I have no idea. Well, never mind. I guess that makes sense because they needed a good, like a well-trained dog. But the dog training in that movie was ridiculous. It was pretty awesome. And hot, hot fact about that, because I, I know the lore of the mask pretty fucking well, just for context. You should get a mask tattoo. I, I want to get the dog. I want to get the dog. Oh, I was going to say, like, you should just go green face. Oh, I should just paint my whole face. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, nah, I got that thing. It's fine. That is true. But how pissed would you be if I super glued that on your face while you were asleep? <laughs> um, I'd be furious. I'd for be, a little I, bit and then you'd be like wow this is cool no that thing hurts to wear have you ever tried to put have you put it on your face i have which is now imagine it's super glued <laughs> <laughs> so now you have chemical burns all over your face too <laughs> i fuck you <laughs> why do you want to do that to me man uh, fucking so yeah the dog was really funny in the movie the movie it was just yeah like i don't I what think, what I would think, you rate it me okay what do you my unbiased i was like go unbiased because i know there's a lot of nostalgia that plays into that which is fair i don't want to write that off uh pro- honestly my unbiased opinion just because yeah it a 7.5 yeah 7.5 like so- it's i see what they were trying the to do. I see the vision. I love what they do. I, the, honestly, the, okay, the dialogue is not great, but the story. Yes. The story and like some of the dialogue, some of it. Some, there's some, there are some think, really funny lines. I think Jamie Kennedy did a good job acting. I, I agree. Jamie, still, I, I think he did a great job. So, and like for, cause he is, a, I think he, like, you think he's a tool, whatever, you know? He, you know okay. Like, in the beginning, I feel like in the beginning of the movie, a lot of like the dialogue between him and his wife, that was really fucking corny. Like it was just his lines were just, they, they were so lame. They're a weird couple, but yeah, there's weird couples out there. So and he, I think he could, I think he did the best of what he could do at the time. And also just owning up in those shoes of Jim Carrey. Yeah. Jim Carrey is a fucking comedy King. Yeah. And not saying like, Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know too much of uh, uh, Jamie Kennedy's work that much. He's done some stuff. He was in Harold and Kumar. Go to White Castle. Yeah, that's hilarious. Isn't that awesome? Who? What, what did he? Who was he? I, he was just one of the characters. In the, oh. I can't remember what's on my head right now, but he was in that White Castle employee number three. <laughs> so he, yeah, this is a very interesting film for him, and uh, I, I do there. I need to talk about this deleted scene. Oh, yeah. What's Be- that? <laughs> because holy shit. <laughs> In the son of the mask, there is a deleted scene explaining how the son of the mask was born. Would you care to elaborate? Oh, yes. They have a deleted scene. Or they CGI'd some sperms that were green and looked like the mask going to an egg. Impregnating. <laughs> that fucking crazy? In the movie, it's just which, when we were watching the movie, because what happens is 
The wife wants to have a kid. The dad doesn't want to have a kid. The dad puts on the mask. The mask gets horny. And then the wife is like, oh, let's have some sex. And then so they start kissing. They're in bed. Camera pans away. And I'm like, let's see how they how they imply unprotected sex in a child's movie. Let's see how they do that. Uh, and it just cuts to the morning in the movie. But the deleted scene. There's <sighs> sperms. Just they literally show sperm inside of a, a vagina like the like it's like fucking magic school bus. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. What? You should show me that later. <laughs> you want to see? You want to look at yeah. sperms? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> fucking. Yeah. So I give the movie a 7.5 because I see the vision. I I liked it for the sequel. I for, watched it a bunch as a kid. It entertained the shit out of me. As for a what kid. it is. For what it is, really cool. I like the dog. The dog like, is such a cool part of the movie. Yeah. But it has a lot of problems. The CGI is not great. I mean, also, I mean, you know what's crazy? Mm. You know the company that did that CGI? What? Who? The guys who did Jurassic Park. Jurassic? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say what I was about to say. What? <laughs> Nothing. I don't want to say it. I'll say something. I was about to say Jurassic Park was CGI. <laughs> 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 well, because I, I thought that I saw something about like they had like machines, but then I was like, well, I guess like, you can't do that with a Brontosaurus. So, <laughs> so they're pretty big. <laughs> but dog dude dog hold on hold on i i might have something crazier than whatever the fuck you were about to say what there's a company that's legit jurassic parking animals like legit in 2025 or 2025 or 27 26 aiden look this up real quick because there is something there is a company that i know for a fact is resurrecting a woolly mammoth but it's set to be born and like maybe it's 2028 but like in the next five years, we are going to resurrect an extincted animal, and their entire purpose is to bring back animals that have been lost. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. No. Colossal. Sorry. Colossal Laboratories Bioscience. Uh, I, the DNA of the tech and the leading expert. Let me see. The, is it an Instagram page? Uh, no, this is their website. Let me let me see the let me see the website real quick. Yeah. 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 That's fucking crazy. I'm. Dude, that's str- okay. So the mammoth, first yeah. off, like that's insane, and it, it's not. Where are we gonna put them? They're big. I know. Do Dude, they need? What, to, would they have to they go have... to Antarctica? Dude, this website is so cool. Yeah, See, that sounds like everything on this website is awesome. I don't think they'd have to. Like they were walking around here in the, like North America. Were they? Yeah, I don't know. A like, long time sh- ago, I don't know anything about woolly mammoths. I don't know, like except from Ice a- Age. Ray Ray Romano is a fucking woolly mammoth (laughs) so you guys got two melons (laughs) yeah dude also fucking uh, whatever it is Sid in that movie is great Sid the Sloth also man who was the saber tooth tiger who played the saber tooth tiger Uh, I don't remember Mm, I don't remember I don't know Daniel something hang on a second you know I yeah okay so that corporation Blue Sky like yeah that made the, like that made like the movies I they had a send off for like their their they were shutting I know yeah and dude that wow that send off was it is sad that was very sad to watch I liked Blue Sky movies Rio was re- what were other Blue Sky movies Rio was really good it's the only one that's coming to mind really to be honest is Rio yeah who knows maybe they should have gone out of business Ice Age though Dennis yeah. Leary Dennis, Dennis Leary. Leary yeah I don't fucking know who that is yeah. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I think he, uh, he's, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of any movies he's been in right now. He's, hey, he's great as Diego. He was great as Diego. Like, that's, a, that was my name in Spanish. It was. And that's how, it's Spanish class. We met in Spanish class for context. Neither we talked about that last episode. I, think. I know. Neither of us speak Spanish, though. Yeah, we're pretty bad. We did not do well. We were, we were, we were too busy having a good time. That is. That was the communication we were building. We, I will say, shout out our Spanish teacher because yeah. she let us get away with, not caring at all. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Uh, Dennis Leary was Bill in uh, Sandlot. I haven't seen the Sandlot. Uh, what? What? Yeah, really. I, I haven't seen the Sandlot. Huh. You haven't seen the Sandlot? Never. <laughs> I, yeah, I just never, never got into it. There's like a lot of bizarre movies that I haven't seen. 
Do you want to know a slept on movie in my, well, I don't know about slept on, but like not a talked about enough movie in my opinion. What's that? Horton Hears a Who. Hey, that is a good movie. Fucking great. I watched that movie like on repeat as a kid. Steve Carell and Jim Carrey. Like, so, like that's like, that's an awesome Seth movie. Rogen too. Oh yeah. That oh. stacked cast. Stacked. That's fucking cool as hell. That's a great, yeah, that is a really funny movie. Um, how do you feel about like, how do you feel about like How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey, and also uh, uh, Cat in the Hat? How do you feel about those movies? Those mm. two movies. Uh, is it Mike Myers' Cat in the Hat? Yes. Um, <laughs> so, I, full transparency, I don't know that I've seen The Cat in the Hat in its entirety. Really? I, I don't know that I've seen it. Mm. I know that I've seen The Grinch. I The Grinch is fine. It scared the shit out of me as a kid terrified me as a kid creepy grinch yeah but having seen it it, it's pretty good but i I gotta be honest my favorite grinch movie the 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 benedict cumberbatch one the one that tyler the creator made a soundtrack for yeah dude that one's pretty good that was awesome that was a funny movie i really i I liked his version of the grinch like he wasn't like he wasn't like this like that disgusting he was disgusting but they're like they went like a route of like you did comfort eating and yeah, so, it was just was goofy. Yeah, 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 it was still as well animated. Illumination kills it. Yeah, I know. I like them a lot. I will say the minions minions kind of weird. Getting a little annoying. <laughs> yeah. been a, honestly, been a little annoying for a while. Like right. I like the Despicable Me movies and like I there is some moments of the minions. I'm like, yeah, it's funny. But like, God, dude, they have three minion movies. It's OK. Minion movies are gas, though. Are they're, they? they're pretty great. I haven't seen them. So, like that's, that's you're not fucking with the Despicable Me universe? There's a lot of movies on Despicable Me. There are. Well, it's very popular movies. Yeah. It's honestly kind of impressive how how massive that movie got. Think about this. They have a, a, a whole series of movies. Yeah. Like, let's like six. I think there's like three mini movies, three Despicable Movies. Pretty sure they're going to come out of Despicable Me 4. But, I think they are, too. But that's a whole series. And, like, that's what Star Wars had in the 80s. Like how crazy! Imagine. Well, Star Wars only had three movies in the eighties. They didn't get the other six until oh, the, yeah. until the oh, early two yeah. thousands. That's even crazier. They yeah. built in the span of like what ten years, fifteen years. Yeah, they built seven movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, do you, why do you think it took? What was the gap for them making the prequels? Was it just tech, the technology, technology to make it, or was it George Lucas needing to make the script? Probably a little combination of both. Yeah. And honestly, it's crazy that the that that we created the best movie of this the 21st century at the very beginning. How, this, how crazy is that? To you? This is your this is your hot take. Go ahead and get, give your hot take real quick. So it's so the best movie of the 21st century is Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hot take. Thank, thank you. Aiden, Aiden's clapping. It's a it's a hot take. It's a hot take for sure. It is a hot take. It's not a. But man, dude, that that plot, that line, everything that is built up to that movie, yeah, to show exactly how Darth Vader became Darth Vader. And like the prequels is pretty awesome. They have their flaws, but Revenge of the Sith, yeah, no flaws, not a single flaw. I feel like the prequels. I grew up shitting on the prequels because it was what was popular to do. But then Aiden was actually the one that put me onto them really hard. Uh, mainly because when you see the entire story that's being told through, mainly through the Clone Wars, you're able to appreciate the story so much more. It's just there was so much that happened in the span of the prequels that trying to fit all of that in a sense that makes sense into those three movies is very difficult to do. I agree. On top of that, I won't deny that the writing and the act. I don't I don't I don't even want to say that the writing and the acting is bad because I feel like everybody says that, but I I like it. I like it too. It, I it, it's it's not it's like it's real. It's like a real per like it's like I look at it, I'm like this would actually happen this way. This, yeah. If if everything were to play out exactly like and they just showed the brief moments of like someone breaking down. Yeah. I fucking see it. Hayden Christensen, he's weird. You know why he's weird? Maybe because it's real. Yeah. Like it happens. And fuck, dude, just like that story is just terrible, and heartbreaking. But then it ends on it brings a new hope. It does. Just like a change of season. Like, I will seriously consider Revenge of the Sith something that we will be studying just as much as like a Shakespearean piece. I'm serious. I it's like that movie itself, like, is just 
Mind-blowing. I could see it. I, I've i always believed, you mentioned that and it made me think of this. I've always believed this, that I genuinely think that um, there's a lot of hip hop lyrics that are going to be studied in English classes. I mean, yeah, that's already been kind of going on. Like, I think it's going to be like dependent album, on the artist. Like specifically that album. Like, Damn. I, oh, my I, God. My, my English teacher, yeah. she brought like we were talking about that album. Really? Yeah. We were studying the lyrics. Oh. Like, for, like we were studying poetry at that yeah. time. And then we, we dead ass studied some lyrics of that. It's a, it's a great album. Now, I will say, I don't think you're going to be studying like NLE Choppa or. Yeah, I, I, I get like that. anything like that, because I feel like there's definitely tears to it. Mm-hmm. So, God, music is so interesting how. Just, it, the music age we're in now is so much different than it's ever been because anyone can put music out and it, it used to just be everyone could play music, but not everyone can put music out. Now, everyone can just put music out. Yeah. And I feel like it's giving a lot of bad rep to certain genres because sometimes the not great stuff is what pops off. But and then that gives a whole subculture of everything, not to mention you have this whole subculture of not good music that's just not popping off and just not just lame on SoundCloud. And although, you know, some SoundCloud shit is not bad, but it's just I don't know. I feel like there's there's so much. Dude, like that's what's crazy about now is because everybody has a like anyone can get GarageBand on their phone get a beat on there, yeah. spit a verse, or they can create a composition of like make a rock song and anyone can do that now. Like in like a long time ago, like not even that long, I mean, like let's say 20, 30 years ago, yeah. it would be very hard to accomplish that. And it might be possible, but mm-hmm. it's hard to accomplish that unless you want to hire a band and do that and also go into a studio. It takes a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Now it's even more accessible. It's commercial. Yeah. And like it's, com- it's like, I think it's way more commercial to like, that's what's very interesting about it. So, in this instance, someone could just like, instead of like saying, I'm going to pick up a guitar and join a band. Like that was the commercial. I feel like that was a way more commercial way of doing it. Now it's, you can be an artist Mm -hmm. and you can be making beats like through your phone, just making the sounds, even just the bass notes, whatever. There's even some like paid apps that you can get. They're like legit, like Mm -hmm. pretty solid, like stuff on, you can do on your phone. You can hook up your phone to like, like, I think there's like FL studio. I'm pretty sure. Mm, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, but I think so. I, um, but it's really interesting what you can do with it now. And we it, can do with our, with just our phones. That's the crazy thing is yeah, you can do so much. You could run a show through your phone. You could run, you can do so much through your phone now. It's pretty fucking crazy. I feel like that's kind of where you and I are in an interesting position. Like, in terms of like age, because we are technically Gen Z, but yeah. we're older Gen Z. And we are, we really are the last people that remember what it was like right before cell phones got what they are today. Like, I agree. Like, I remember that time and like it was just, it was just different. Yeah. Kids today have no clue, like, literally no idea. Streaming. I, I, I remember, I, I can't even, like, years of streaming, like, has been crazy to me. Yeah. And, like, the fact that we used to have to, wa- like, wait for shows to come out on channels and, like, have to watch it at a specific, specific time we'd have to watch that show. Yeah. And now. I remember being excited for days coming up because I knew that some show was going to be on. It's just insane. Like, everything has changed with that. And I'm just like, fuck. Ah. You, I remember it's awesome, but like at the same time, I like, I wonder, like, you know, like I, I, I I'm happy. We should definitely not take this to shit for granted because yeah. it's amazing what we have right now. And it would suck if that got taken away. That's my thing is I feel like so many people do take it for granted because I mean, I remember growing up, there were like three or four channels that I had that I was like, all right, if there has to be something on here, if there's not, then I need to find something else to do. Yeah. And it was, what was it? I watched Nickelodeon Cartoon Network. Nicktoons. Nicktoons was fucking awesome. Goated. Goated as fuck. Also, they had Nick at Night, and so like they would play like old cartoons on there too. Oh my so god. Cool. Nicktoons Nick was awesome. They played Dragon Ball Z on there. 
They did? Oh, yeah, they yeah. fucking did. Yeah. So I never, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big Dragonfall fan, so I, I never really watched it. But I remember, like, seeing it on there and shit. I'm like, yeah. that's fucking crazy, though. So I remember that was the first, like, ever experience I had with Dragon Ball. Uh, you Not Nickelodeon, but Cartoon Network, their nighttime program, like, I guess it was, so I guess Adult Swim. Uh, Adult Swim, like, right as the, it would transition between Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, they would uh, show anime. And that's how I found Naruto. Oh, that's fucking cool. So yeah. I didn't end up watching through it until I got Netflix, but... Well, Still. for a long time, too, like Cartoon Network and into uh, uh, Cartoon Network into Adult Swim, they also did like they would start off with King of the Hill. Yeah. Which is cool because like King of the Hill is such a soft start. Like King of the Hill is very like, uh, I don't know, I would say it's similar to The Simpsons. It's not mm-hmm. as raunchy as like Family Guy. Or, yeah. Like it's not. So like, that's a good start. So your kids are watching like, oh, fuck, they're watching King of the Hill. Oh, they're going to. They're fine. <laughs> no, I did not have that experience growing up, actually. Really? Well, my parents had a very strict rule that once Adult, Sw- uh, Adult Swim came on, no more. Mm-hmm. Like, you couldn't Adult Swim change the channel. So we were allowed to watch Nick at Night, though. That's nah, cool. So, which was, I watched a lot of George Lopez. It's, yeah. Uh, that was pretty great. I remember fucking. They played that 70s show, Tom, that, that 70s show as well. I did, never saw that 70s show. Really? And maybe I did, but I didn't recognize it. I didn't find that 70s show until much later on. I mean, into the streaming days. I Man, I remember the early days of Netflix. I remember like, I remember getting net, Netflix DVDs. I never got to do that. I knew I had a friend that did that one time. I was like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah, it was insane. I remember being so, I was like, we can just order any DVD we want now? And my dad was like, yeah. And I like, that was revolutionary. Like we and then and then streaming came out and then I was just like, what, 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 what? <laughs> it just comes straight to our TV. It's like like that's oh, that is so fucking cool. I, I think it's funny because I feel like I am imagine like to me, I remember it feeling like Netflix had more stuff on it than it has today. But I think Netflix has more stuff today. But because it was so new when it came out, it felt like there was so much more. Yeah. Like, it, like they, they didn't have like the, the pressure from corporate, like from movie studios. They're like, they were probably like, yeah, fuck it. Send our movies everywhere. And yeah. It got big. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we better uh, start making some specific deals. And That's stuff. To yeah. Like either I, have it on there or not have it on there. Like they have to pay a price or whatever. Like the, there was, I remember it was when we were in high school, when the big streaming like boom happened, when every new streaming platform came out, because for a while it was Netflix and then there was Hulu. What it was Netflix and then Hulu came out. And then I think that was really it for a while. I can't, uh, I mean, there was like, there was HBO, HBO has always had something. There was HBO Go and HBO Now, but they never really did anything because they were like more high end. They didn't really pop off until HBO Max. But I, I do like HBO Max. That's probably, love. That's, that's probably, oh, Max. Yeah, that was, that was that's, so lame. Yeah, it's fine. They're fine. It, it, like, why did they take the HBO out of it? Like, it makes some sense. The reason they did it is because they said they think that the reason that it wasn't performing as well as they wanted it to was because of the HBO and the name. Now it's just Max, which doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Hey, but I mean, well, it's still pretty popular. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah, we all know it is HBO. But we just don't say it. Yeah, that's fair. So it still has HBO stuff on it. Yeah, that's what's cool. I love the Sopranos. I you dude. put me onto the Sopranos, it's man. So good. I I like. I need to watch through it. Watch through it because mm-hmm. I just see it in passing when you have it on, bro. Like I like. I'm about to finish it. I'm on the sixth season right now. Yeah, and fucking oh my dude there's so many like cool scenes like it's sh- it, like the the writing is amazing mm-hmm. but the the writing is amazing but also the cinematography is great the music is great like they just have so many pics of just like that time period songs coming out yeah and then also like just a bunch of old classic songs and like homages to other like mafia movies and stuff like that and other just movies like, yeah like it's pretty fucking cool like there's so many it's there's so many there's so much like cinema history in the yeah. movie. Yeah. Phenomenal show. phenomenal acting. Oh my god. Phenomenal yeah. acting. Like dude, uh James Gandolfini. Is like, that who plays Tony Soprano? Yeah. He, he's awesome. Is he, he still alive? No, he passed away. Ah. Yeah. Damn. Very sad. Ah. Ah. I will say we we're talking about Max and it made me because Warner Media is the people yeah. that fucking run Max and Warner I Brothers. don't like them. Dude. <laughs> 
What the fuck is going on over there? We're never going to see the Wile E. Coyote Roadrunner court movie. Which is ridiculous. Isn't it filmed and edited? It's made. It's then they just said, nope, we're tossing it. Je- it oh, my yeah. God. And you know what? Warner had. Like, so I. I OK, so I'm pissed about it. Yeah. But like, I see why Warner would do that. They would be like, it's just a fucking cartoon. It's and shit. They, the, the Looney Tunes are definitely mistreated in Warner Brothers. Like they are fucking like abused yeah like they and they it sucks because they're cartoons and like that can just be fine for them and that's they've made that for themselves yeah like that's fucked (laughs) and just like (sighs) i don't know why i have sympathy for a cartoon character because they're they're literally just being beaten no well you have sympathy for cartoon characters because that's who's raised you (laughs) i mean yeah i love them and like that's why i'm like yo they're being like mistreated in like every like every corporation except for like spongebob spongebob's all right spongebob's great kind of after 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 steven hill Hillenberg died. Nickelodeon started doing some more spinoffs and more like, show. definitely started trying to just milk it a little more, which it's whatever. I, it is what it is. So it, it's a shame. It like, I don't know. Cause here's the thing is the question is, would it have happened if Steven Hillenberg was still alive? And that's what I just, I think, I don't think anyone will really know. So I know he didn't want that to happen. Well, I saw I know the quote there was some it, the, the quote is very interesting. It's mm-hmm. it's he said not that he didn't want it. He just said that he can't imagine any like he's like, I don't know what we would even do a spinoff of. So and I do think that they just got kind of lazy with it because I don't we didn't need a Patrick Star show. Are they watching? Are people watching? I don't kids think, watching. It? I don't think so. I haven't watched it. And it's just I'm I only find myself coming back to the old episodes and then starting to watch from there. And then once I hit that point where I'm like, all right, it's getting a little kid. Like, I want to say, like, I, I feel like I've seen it. And like, that's where yeah. I'm kind of like, all right, I need to stop watching. I, like, I, I'll probably end by like season. Like, I'll probably stop watching by like season nine. I honestly kind of disagree. I actually I think new SpongeBob honestly holds up. Really? Yeah, dude. I like I shat on it for a while, but the. I ended up watching some of the new SpongeBob just when it was on TV at like when I was at a hotel or something. And I was really impressed. It was funny. I enjoyed it. It was fun. There, I, I remember watching. There was the episode where they brought back Nosferatu. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. It was That's aw- cool. It was awesome. And it's like I want to watch through more of it because I don't know a lot about it. And I feel like it's so easy to shit on the new of what we had as a kid because it's easy to say what we had as a kid was the best because that's the same thing for son of the mask exactly like it's literally like the same situation and like it's it's so hard to fulfill those shoes that were like those foundations yeah that fucking dude like the 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 first three seasons well, first four seasons of spongebob are just Good. goaded as fuck all right well even you get into five, season five and six season yeah. five and six are amazing too yeah i agree I need to go into the. I, I just need to watch that. How many seasons of SpongeBob are there? Can we get a fact check on that? I bet it's like. I bet it's like twenty five. What do you think? Twenty five? No, there's no way there are twenty five. Because say it's a twenty. N- I, I think past twenty. 18, 18, 18. Okay. I'm, I think 18 because Simpsons hit twenty five, and that was like a big deal because it was like the one of the longest running shows. Hmm. I think eighteen sounds about right. 14. 14. Wow. wow way yes. less. Okay. Huh. How many episodes are in each season? Uh, Isn't it like 20? I don't know, but there are, as of February 26th of this year, there are 299 episodes. Damn. So they're average, almost at the 300. That, damn, they are on par with UFC. <laughs> what? On average, there are about 21 episodes. Okay. Per season. That's so, pretty cool. I want to start getting into UFC, man. Really? UFC 300's coming up, and I just I keep watching fights and like clips of fighters, and I'm starting to like get into the the zeitgeist. <laughs> <laughs> and um it's just so cool. I, I love MMA. It's so fucking cool to me. I don't know. I I I've watched stuff and like I don't know I like boxing kind of I don't even watch boxing but I'm like I watch boxing movies and some matches and yeah. like, I watch stuff it's just like it's not my it's not my bag man it's just like I, it's so intense to see people just fucking fight just, it is but know, like it's it I don't know just kind of like just I don't know I'm, I'm a peaceful guy you got well you got to remember that a they're trained b they're want to do this and it's 
not out of hate. It's out of let's prove and let's see who is the best fighter. Let's see who can do it out of any martial arts style, striking on the ground, whatever it be, put it all out there and let's do it. Yeah. And I think it's it's so cool. It's so, also as a guy with a jujitsu background and like just that appreciation. I also, to be fair, I also grew up watching UFC with my dad. Not like all the time, but every yeah, once yeah, in a while. Yeah. But like, it's so cool. It is pretty fucking cool. Like, I agree. Like the the fight is pretty sweet. Also, like being in that position. Like, yeah. I like I used to wrestle mm-hmm. and like that fuck it is pretty intense to like fight someone and if you do win like that's a great feeling but like you know losing sucks but like yeah. it's still the appreciation and like the honor is in that it's yeah sweet very honorable sport yeah so there are some some i can't call them out because i don't know their names and i'm not bro I'm, karate dude like you ever watch the karate kid and you're like fuck yeah bro let's let's get it dude let's get it, daniel woo woo daniel oh, even oh. though he was the real villain <laughs> according to cobra kai according to cobra kai lit ass show lit ass show you know what is a weird thing about that show is that it started as a youtube tv original and then netflix was like mm, that's too good we're gonna buy it from you <laughs> they're like listen <laughs> you don't deserve it youtube <laughs> so it, it, it's just so fucking funny to me we were talking about ufc i actually did want to mention this because i was doing this the other day i've been talking about vr a lot i know i, I think i've talked about it on the last yeah. couple episodes but dude i was watching a ufc fight in vr it was awesome cage side like just on like i was like well technically it was like an octagon and I, like i was on top and like I was looking down, but it was the one of the coolest ways I've ever seen a UFC fight. That's pretty fucking cool. So I was also watching NBA highlights courtside. That was pretty awesome. Uh, that's pretty fucking. Yeah, yeah. I already telling about that. Like that's that's really that that's pretty cool that they can just do that. I know. Well, it's it was through this app called X Stadium, mm-hmm. and they have partnerships with I know NBA and UFC, and I think a couple of other sports. But I'm excited for VR to get more mainstream because I'm excited to start seeing a lot more of those experiences by a lot of companies because I think a lot of companies have a lot of exciting things to offer. It's just they don't have a reason to make it yet because it's not in that mainstream yet. I get that. What do you think it's going to take to get VR into the mainstream? I mean, it's starting to. It's just... uh, But what do you think is going to be like the real pivot to take it out of from... Yeah, some people have a VR and it's like a hobby. Like some people have it and it's a cool thing that they have too. Everyone wants to have it and it's becoming a part of everyday life. I don't know. Probably like uh, something that's amazing. Like it is top tier, amazing level. That's Mm -hmm. at a good, at at a decent, good commercial price. Yeah. Like it could be something like, I don't know. Maybe expensive is just the PS5. So instead of investing into a PS5, you can invest into a VR headset. Yeah. Um, actually, the Quest 3 is cheaper than the PS5. There you go. So, well, here's my thing is that I think it's going to go in the direction that Apple Vision Pro is going in the direction of spatial computing rather than virtual reality that's, or whatever. That's amazing. It is. It is amazing. Like, I agree that like having like, having a better system to be able to like look at like look at people and also be able to like not just be inside of it the whole time, mm-hmm. like be able to like instead of taking it off, you know, like that, that will definitely help. And mm-hmm. I'll have to come with time. And that's, and that's an unfortunate reality of it because it's so much fun. It's so much mm-hmm. fun. I wish people would be like more like, I guess like not into it, but just mm-hmm. like, like, well, if, like a lot of, and you know, it's weird. Hmm. People are opening businesses just for VR headsets. That's, yeah. that's weird to me. What do you mean? Well, in, in our town, there's yeah. this place. So it used to be called, um tuesday morning mm-hmm. is now a it's just it's called a fun house yeah i don't is know. it oh is it a vr arcade yeah like do they sell or wait are they selling vr stuff or is it like no it's just they have vr stuff that you can use oh that makes sense it it looks weird <laughs> no that makes i mean here's my thing at least the one that's here in town looks okay. weird like you have to take my word for it dude. okay i was like i would i, I would I have to see in it and walk down instantly I'm like nope <laughs> so i would have to see it because i've seen i've seen those before but i've seen like high-end ones like what they're supposed to yeah. look like i've thought about opening one in the future like because it's not a bad idea at least having one with like the treadmills and like all those like yeah it's no different than an arcade cabinet yeah. like an, an arcade yeah so and i here's my thing is that 
I feel like we're talking about spatial computing and VR as if they're like two completely separate. They're kind of two sides of the same coin in the sense that spatial computing is kind of both because although, yes, it is the you can see the pass through, you can see everything around you and it will place like entities and stuff on walls and and interact with your environment. Tony Stark type vision. Exactly. But also it can be that virtual reality. And I think it's going to need to get to the point where it's like really good hand tracking. I think it's going to. I don't it's going to need to get to the point where it has use, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's interesting because I think about that. But when we're talking like Oasis or like some of that social VR environment in VR chat, I've been playing so much VR chat. But at the same time, there's no use for it. So I guess I can't I don't I don't know what's going to make that pivot. Yeah, I think it's going to be when it comes to personalization. I think when it can you can have a lot of personalization to it and it can become more of a social account. Yeah, like more like a social media account, because think about that would be really cool if you can be like, do you guys want to see my house? Right. My whatever house would be is like that's going to be the big thing that I think is going to take VR to the next step or these social environment or these social experiences or whatever the fuck the future of VR is going to turn into. I think it's going to be personalized digital assets that you can show off that belong to you that like you can earn. I don't know. It's got to be some representation of work. You've said a corporation such as Fortnite might be able to do something in that regard. A hundred percent. That you think that they might be able, might probably already have on path to do that. I I genuinely think so. Here here's my prediction, right? Mm-hmm. WWDC is coming up in June. I think it's on June sixth, maybe June. I don't know. I don't, June something. Else. Yeah. And <laughs> do, what WWDC is is that's Apple's developer conference. And I have no confirmation of any of this, but what I feel like might happen and what could happen is I think that we could see the announcement of Apple's consumer level vision product. So not the Apple Vision Pro, but the Apple Vision, right? Whatever. The first model that can go out to mass consumers. I could see it being priced around 700 to 1000. I don't see them breaking a thousand. I think if they want to keep it to consumers, I think they need to keep it under a thousand. But. I also think it's going to showcase some new developer footage of some new applications that have been made because the Apple Vision Pro, the only reason that it came out was for the purpose of developers being able to get used to the technology and be able to develop for it. And I think we're going to see some of the new apps, some of the reasons that you would want to get the Apple Vision. Yeah. And no confirmation of this, but we could see an announcement of Disney and Epic Games new project that they're working on where you can play, watch, shop, create all of that. So like, I think it's we all could, speculation. It is. But here's what I do know is that Disney is partnered with Apple. Apple is putting out. They are actively working in this space and working towards a new future in that Disney is actively Working alongside that because Disney's whole Disney Plus application in there is crazy. You can watch Star Wars movies on Tatooine. It's insane. It's fucking crazy. And we know that that's happening. And then Disney invests $3 billion into Epic Games. <laughs> I just feel like it all makes too much sense. Yeah. I, I agree. Like completely. Like and you tell me like that, like this speculation, this theory. Yeah. And I'm like that, like that makes complete sense to me. And I'm like, they... And like that seems like what's going on under the like like they're cooking. They are cooking. They're cooking. Well, dude. also not to mention if you could bring in all of your Fortnite skins as usable avatars, a that would be huge. Another thing I think they would have to do is they have to have a there has to be some sort of customizable avatar feature where you have an avatar in and of like you get to design yourself and then you can buy like customize or accessories yeah first that's what they would have to do that i think you should still have skins as like you can have an avatar just be whatever like be deadpool be fucking goro whatever the fuck yeah but um yeah i just it's just so exciting i i I honestly sometimes feel a little crazy because i feel like i'm looking around at the world and i feel like i'm just like how is no one talking about this how is no one freaking out about All of this stuff that's happening. Like, I feel like it's for me, like I've been watching it for so long. I feel like it's so obvious what we're going to, but I feel like no one's talking about it. 
I feel like people like I, I don't know like the reason why maybe mm-hmm. for that like I feel like people are like we're like we're worried about like um I guess like the state of the world and stuff like that but at the same time I feel like that's also like completely draining them for actually working towards something they're focused yeah too much on just the state of just like how like there's bad things going on in the world mm-hmm. and like and I feel like that's a big problem like I wish people would invest in like themselves and then also just like pushing for a better future and that like they can have this treat. Yeah. This, this thing like, hey, get to play Fortnite in like this amazing virtual world with my friends. But hey, I have this, but I got to be able to work towards a better future. Yeah, and it like, needs to be an, uh, what's it called? It needs to be an addition, not a replacement. Of right? course. And like, I feel like right now, I just feel like people are just, with the way social media works like i i I, me and you we talked about this i like like where we have ourselves so like we're we're not watching the news as much like we're watching important events yeah like surf like like the the bridge in baltimore yeah that broke like we're we're kept up on that and like that's a fucking terrible event that happened but like when it comes to like the fucking like the likeness of political leaders i'm not watching that shit yeah i'm serious yeah i'm pretty here's the thing is like I feel like, some, yes, it's important to stay up to date on like big, important stuff. But yes. I feel like some people get too sucked into the news where they're looking at every little thing. You don't have to do that. You, you don't, don't need to be to worried about what's going on in some small town in Iowa. Like you can just shit. That's not a reference to anything in case something bad did happen in some small town in Iowa. That was just like a random. Re- I'm scared that there was like some really big like clan rally there or something. And everyone's gonna be like, you don't care about that. It's like, no. Yeah, that would be terrible. But that's not shut up <laughs> but fuck i totally lost my thought because i had fucking Damn it. i was just defending myself um fuck iowa bro fuck Who iowa cares? man oh no but i feel like some people need to remember that you can just enjoy the life you have keep up to date with what's going on in your area i feel like yeah. that's the big thing is take care of your we all live in cities and towns we do well, that's like yeah. we all live somewhere take I, care of where you live Dude, like you're, you're, get involved. Your your like your government, your like, I guess like your a local government is important. Yeah, talking about it, getting the right people in there, and like that's important. And I feel like people are just a little too caught up on who the president is. Yeah, he doesn't do fucking shit. The I mean, president really okay. He does some stuff. There's a cog in the machine. Yeah, ex- br- bruh, dude, it's literally it, this. Okay, so I I'm just making sure. Like, yeah, I'm, I might get this wrong. So it goes to it starts in the. Con, like the con, con, I don't fucking know. It goes starts in Congress, then it goes to Senate, yeah, then it goes to the President. Right? No House, it goes to the House of Representatives, House, yes, then Senate, then President Aiden. Yes, you I, passed no, history. That, no, that's that's right. Or not history, civics. Yeah, it's, it, it is the House of Representatives. Then it goes to the Senate. Then it goes to the President. Can you see how yeah. educated we are? <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what like, you got. It right. That that sounds right. And. So, yeah, I, I, I thought it was the con- I, I, I couldn't remember how it was saying it. I'm stupid you're fine <laughs> fucking uh, but anyways yeah it does that and then, the president has the final decision after they say yes and he says no that is so like it's I don't know it seems like a good system it's just flawed in the, in the way that like they can have is the set it up and, like the people in power can mm-hmm. set it up in the way so they can sway the opinion by telling them hey if you don't do this we're going to, we're not going to give you money. Yeah. There's right. a, there's a, there is a, a lot, lot of greed, a lot of bribery. Exactly. And like, that's a flawed system. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such a long series of events to get to one decision. Like they're about to get rid of TikTok. I, well, I honestly, I don't think they will. I have no idea if we'll they see. will. I don't, is what, oh, did you, did you, con- were we right? It's, more or less, yeah. All right, sure. I'll take more or less. Who wants than that? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take it. Right. I'll take it. We're not teachers. Yeah, the president is the final authority. He has to yeah. sign it within ten days of it getting on his desk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's it. He's when are we gonna sign. fucking get that legalized weed paper on his desk? Jesus Christ! Oh, yeah, yeah, straight up federally. Christ, right. maybe that chronic will wake up Sleepy Joe. <laughs> you know he'd eat he'd be eating more ice cream cones he would be eating more ice cream cones <laughs> he he does eat like a lot of ice cream cones not it. why is he always with a fucking ice cream cone i don't fucking know it's just like anytime he's on tv he'll be talking about like a fucking like a serious event like, like maybe like the war in ukraine or pakistan the syria bombings are sad 
<laughs> and then he fucking walks around the room not knowing where he is for five yeah, minutes. I was like, Mr. President, like, what? how do you feel about this whole situation? Huh? <laughs> and then chocolate chip. Uh, uh, oh, God. I love African Americans. <laughs> I support everything. Uh, what? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Say the world's great, and we're not up to date with it, but I feel like that's just because we want to bring joy to people, not. We're not focused on the bullshit. We, we shouldn't. Except for right now. We're, we're oddly focused on the bullshit right now. Yeah. Let's I, stop. Let's get away from the bullshit. Yeah. Probably bumming people out. <laughs> Fucking, are you guys bummed? Oh, let's talk awesome. about, let's see, what are sad things we can talk about? You want to talk what? about the Holocaust? No, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a movie coming out about, uh, I think it's an eight. I think it actually already is out, but it's an A24 movie and it's about this family that lives like right next to like a fucking concentration camp. Jesus Christ. And like Christ. they notice that there's a fucking like ash in the water and shit. Huh? Why, uh, is such, why is that such a common thing for movies? Yeah. So like, for a house to be right next to a concentration camp. Well, I can I only think of one other movie, and that's that's the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah. Well, I don't think they would have a house in the middle of a concentration camp. I, it's kind of like that, though. So like I've seen some they would just open. They would open the movie with just a camera panning into the house, just in the middle of the con- concentration camp, and it's just playing our house. In the middle of the street, our house, and then it does like Holocaust shit, and then it would, you know, it'd be crazy. But what the fuck? (laughs) 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 You see all the walls and towers. (laughs) Uh, it's like all of them standing happily a very German family on the front porch the, then that goes into the house they try and walk outside stay in there alright <laughs> <laughs> then it rolls uh, credits that's oh all right, you're no. in the shot. Just, yeah how do you uh, think Netflix would make a holocaust movie um would they make the Nazis black chicks what <laughs> no they would definitely start with a like the the netflix logo like you know the sound like Ta-dum. <laughs> <laughs> <Netflix original. laughs> oh you know it's a great netflix original huh another like a mafia movie like i like it a lot it's, it's, like, it's, it's a little controversial actually it seems like like i've heard mixed reviews of it the irishman you've heard mixed reviews about that i have i i guess some, i some I, people I, have like a really hard time with the um the the cgi for one thing what yeah, dude, because like, okay, okay come on, come on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Robert De Niro, and I'm actually 28 in this scene. Yeah, but if you don't pay, I, okay, old here's my thing. I didn't pay attention to that. I, I didn't pay attention to it either. The story is really good. Yeah, I was like, I, I've never seen any reviews about it. I've literally only watched the movie and formed my own opinion. I, it was yeah. fucking awesome. It's, I thought it's a I, great movie. I thought the CGI was great. I thought they did a great job. I thought the writing was amazing. Mm-hmm. I, it is a really long movie, but I don't think that's a bad thing. It seems like a lot more movies are trying to be longer now, right? Like we we just talked about that recently. And like that, I, it makes sense though. Because yeah, like they want to tell more story. Like two hours is sometimes hard to talk about all the stuff. Yeah. Well, I feel like sometimes you it's better to get the whole story because it's in not compress it. Mm-hmm. So Martin Scorsese is I mean, he's a big advocate for that talking about we needing needing to give films their adequate respect and time and involvement. Yeah. And it, it, I I love it. It it makes it more of an event. Like it, instead of being like, oh, let's fucking throw something on. Like, you know, let's have some fun, whatever. It's like, no, I'm going to, I want, now I will say it's kind of like a highbrow. Like it's a very fucking highbrow thing, I guess. Yeah. But like, if you want to appreciate the movies, appreciate the film. And it's like, cause here's the thing is that the Irishman is not a movie that I can turn on at just any time. We're back folks. Sorry. About we're that. back. Sorry. We had to plug some shit in. Yeah. Uh, the, bad. but the Irishman, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't even know what people would say negative. Like, what are people? Some people say that um, it's not true because of oh. just like it, the Jimmy Hoffa story of like how he disappeared. Like, there's, it's been speculated ever since it happened. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty hush hush. I guess. I guess and, that is fair. But I don't know. I, I really did enjoy the movie and like what it was trying to show. Maybe, and maybe it is true. Like Scorsese did it, and like that song is just like. It makes sense. And like other mobsters and like, who knows what these other mobsters are saying? Like maybe they're trying to sabotage. Maybe it's, maybe it's real. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But like, yeah, again, I wasn't even paying attention. I just looking at it as a story in and of itself. Like I think just looking at it as a movie, 
such a great movie. It's amazing. So I mean, he, God, guy, oh, Jesus. I was just thinking about Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, dude. Yeah, man. Like, Scorsese's newest movie, which was great. Phenomenal awesome. movie. I watch, I've only seen it once. I want to see it again. It's just real really long. Real bummer. Real, real bummer. Really makes yeah. you feel bad as a white person. Holy shit. And the fact that like people were doing that. And like this was like 100 years ago. Yeah. And the way we've kept mistreating Native Americans in our country is just fucking atrocious and especially yeah. that it, it's still going on well no. i was like let's be real all right we cannot compare right now to killers of the flower moon that's fair yes <laughs> like i don't know exactly what's going on with the oppression of native americans now i think they're doing pretty well on their casinos you think so I th- oh, oh my fucking god i think they're doing- <laughs> I, think that, I think you can do they not own casinos <laughs> Am I wrong about this? I was going to say, they have a lot of casinos on fucking, uh, like, the reservations. Yeah, like they're awesome. Of, also outside of the reservations. So, listen, we're not killing them, all right? What? Not we. Well, no one's... Not ca- us, but yeah. definitely a long time ago we did. Like, yeah. We, we killed tons of them, and it's... We took their land and like that's that's why I trip out about America. Itself. You do. I respect you do trip out about that a lot. Well, like it's you, because it's true. Like, yeah, we literally came here and we're just like, man, we hate it here. So we're going to come here and just make it our own. I will. I, I have a problem with that. I, I will say problem. With I, I am about <laughs> <laughs> let's get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> here we <go>. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to try and watch how I phrase this because I, yeah, I got you. It. Let's remember, this may come off terrible. I don't want it to, and I don't even think it will. But like, here's the thing is I feel like nowadays things can g- come off terrible, and I just don't want to be taken out of context. So I just want to be known that I'm saying this with the best intentions. Mm-hmm. I feel that in the social media age, in this modern age that we have, and in the main age that you and I have been developed in, mm-hmm. because that's kind of what we've grown up with. We When we started to really develop ourselves as people, in our teenage years and in those like years of kind of like pretty much 12 onwards is when you're really developing who you are as an individual. That time for us was heavily filtrated through social media and through the internet because that's all we had. And I feel I'm not saying that it's unjustified because I do not want to say that I, (laughs) I, Racism is bad, okay? Yes, racism is bad. Let's get that really fucking clear. Like, I think... Hold on, hold on. Racism's bad. (laughs) I'm not going to say but. What? (laughs) I I feel like we have been raised in an age where I feel like white people just feel terrible all the time because we are always told that we're terrible. And the things we have done are terrible. And that's true. Mm-hmm. Old racism stuff is awful. Terrible. We, yeah. Like, horrible like stuff. We've done some really fucked up shit in like the last not even 50 years. Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. 100%. So. And it's still going on. Our grandparents maybe yell at them all you want. Mm-hmm. But we didn't do anything. At least I haven't. Yeah, I, I like, haven't done fucking. Shit. I feel like I, we're raised in this. Like we have to apologize for all of this racism that we didn't do. Yeah, and I feel like it gives us this weird complex of yes, we feel terrible all the time, but there's nothing that we can do to fix what has already happened. And it's like I don't know. And it's it also puts us in the weird position of. Like, I'm not trying to victimize white people. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to say, let's look at the whole picture of the conversation. For example, there was an instance. I was out with I was out with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We were at a trampoline park. Right. Yeah. And her five year old sister was jumping. There was like a foam pit and they had like a like an exercise ball in the middle. Like, but it was like stabilized. So you could like jump on it. Yeah. And she was just jumping on it. Right. Like she's standing being just fucking five. Yeah. Yeah. And. Out of nowhere, this like 11, 12 year old kid, maybe <laughs> sprints, jumps on it and knocks her off. And I go, hey, did you see her there? And he goes, yeah, I wasn't. I was like, yeah, there was a kid that she's five, dude. Like, you can't do that. Like, you need to pay attention. Like, you can't like 
there are other people's safety. Like you, you have yeah. to be like, like be fucking careful. Be careful. Like I didn't swear. I didn't. Um, I was even even right now. I'm getting more heated than I was in the moment. I didn't even raise my voice. I didn't say anything. I was just like, "Hey, watch where you're going. Like you cannot do that. Like that's not okay." And. I walk away because her brother wanted me to go do something or something like that's an appropriate response just because like, yeah, it's first off, it's a kid. Yeah. And, you know, they don't know better, but like this could be a moment for them. to be Exactly. Like, like, I was and, like, like and regardless, of it's race. important for kids to get called out when they fuck up. Exactly. And that's for anybody too, just people. Yeah. Like it, it should be a common thing. And mm-hmm. like people get a little heated and people have the ego and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but people need to understand they need to ca- take accountability for their own actions. Well, I will. Now, he, he was 12. Although, now, yeah, here, here, he, he was too, 12. So like, yeah. Now here, so like, now, I fine. need to get to the second part of the story yeah. because the kid was black. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. No problem with that. I love, love him. Blacks. Lo- awesome. Love him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can say blacks, but hey, but, can, I don't know. I like African-Americans I, and <laughs> other blacks that are other around, blacks. The, around the world. <laughs> You double down on it. Okay, you double what? down. Oh my god, <laughs> this is a wild episode. We love them, all of them. Our friends. We can't say the word, but we love you. So we're. <laughs> oh my god. Listen, you know, and hey, it's okay. We're it's not, not even trying to say the word. Okay, we're not even trying. Let's get back on topic. I yelled at a black kid, and. <laughs> 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 no, I I corrected him because he almost murdered my sister's five year old sister. Because <laughs> never mind, I'm not and gonna. He, and he happened to be black. He happened to be. I walk away. <laughs> Note: my girlfriend said nothing in this exchange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was in no way, any shape or form, a part of this conversation. She was just next to me. I walk away. Five minutes later black woman walks up to my girlfriend and starts yelling at her. Well, not yelling at her, but reprimanding her because she's like, hey, my son said that you and your boyfriend were just being incredibly racist to him. And Sierra, Sierra, Sierra had to be like, hey, no, no, that is not what happened. And then she explained it. And the mom was like, oh, okay, got it. We're cool. Like, it wasn't a problem. But I feel like this is my point that we're raising people in an age to expect racism, to expect this. And for the white people, because white people are the main perpetrators of it for the long time. We kind of we've been number one at that for a long time. It's not a great thing to be number one at. But I mean, hey, first place is first place, baby. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I will say like this. So. Maybe this kid had this problem. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe he took it at maybe at this time, first 12 years old, whatever yeah. age he is, he's young. And I I assume I don't know because yeah. we're white and there has been racist, racist, yeah. racism in our country for a long time. Yeah. And it's been a short history where people have finally started to be, I guess, not racist, mm-hmm. which is weird. And like like our generation, like like it's just not a, it's I mean, yes, it's still there, but like I, I just, feel like we're really evolving now. But but this kid probably he's probably having to learn about racism and how it will be happening to him. Yeah. Unfortunately, obviously in, you know, maybe he's still learning like what that means. If someone's being mean to him, yeah, not I, mean, but just like hey, saying, Hey, don't do that. Like he messed up and maybe yeah. he didn't understand or whatever. I and just, maybe that's where he took it as racism. Maybe he's still like, you know, yeah. it's just a thing. I feel it sucks that that's what's happening. I'm not, I'm not even holding this against the kid. Like yeah, I'm not, course. I'm not yeah. saying this is like, I get it. I'm saying that I, I worry because if we're raising people to think that any negative thing that they experience to them is Mm -hmm. racism, I feel like that kind of negates real racism, right? Because then it just becomes one gray blob and everyone's pissed at each other. Yeah. So when in reality... Well, you said in the situation, like, you and Sierra talked to that woman. Yeah. The situation, she was fine. Yeah. So so obviously, I bet the mom probably after that, assuming, we don't know, but, like, assuming probably said, like, hey... I wasn't he wasn't being racist. He didn't do a racism. Yeah, he didn't do that a was racism. not that was not a racism. Yeah, because I don't do racisms. I don't like them. I don't I don't like I, I don't understand ass. racist. It's it's coming from a place of maybe they don't understand or they, they don't like it or generational trauma. Yeah. Like a lot of people. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I, I'm frustrated. Like, I, I wish people would be a little more understanding of people, regardless of race. Yeah. Because it, it, it's such a, it's still a thing now. And it's still just like, we're all human. We are yeah. just people. We are on this planet Literally. trying to like, trying to live together. And 
that's what I like about America. Like people say like, like racist people in America talk about how like immigrants is a problem. I like that. We're a mixed bag here. Yeah. That's something that. Well, I will hold on. I will say illegal immigration is a much different issue than racism. Yes. I will say yes. far different. I, they do bleed into uh, each other a little bit, but, <laughs> but so it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like all of the hate that people give. And I like that. We're a mixed bag here in America. It's Just fun. Every Shake race, it up. I, it's nice here because then we get to be with each other. And like, I, 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 we have this problem with racism in America, but like there's racism in every fucking country. Yeah. Well, it's actually worse in a lot of other countries because it's just all them. And like we're here and we're Japan has a really bad racism problem. Really? Actually. Japan and China. Big time. Oh, big God. time racists. Like I just I wish we could all just get along. It really is like that. Like, why can't we not like in this day and age? Like, maybe it's because of resources. Maybe it's because like, but we could be utilizing each other. Yeah. Like the fact that we're trying to fight each other is just. It's wrong. Yeah. Well, I feel like we need to look at it small picture instead of big picture, right? We Mm got to focus on what we can do in our environment. And I feel like that's the nice thing about this podcast is we can do that. And I hope that you as an audience, I hope that you guys feel empowered to do the same thing in your community. I think it's important to rally each other together and rally around positivity. I feel like if we focus on all of the negative shit all the time, of course, things are going to be negative. But if if you guys are that positive light, even if it's not around you, it's going to start shining around and people are going to start seeing that there can be hope. And I feel like that's kind of how it starts. But yeah, it's just like it's rough. It's rough what's going on. And I feel like I feel like now, like in this present day, like like, like I said earlier, I like mm-hmm. to like I look at history and like I see how we could repeat ourselves from like, let's yeah. say, 50 years ago. And but I see our society. I see us as people like we're so more accepting of other races. And like people say they have problems with like the pandering of like putting people in and stuff like that. But like we didn't have that a long time ago, like in the early stages of television. Like, that's why I feel like we're doing it now. So we can show that like we were trying to evolve from where we were. I 100 percent agree with you with a contingency, right? Yeah, I, I okay. understand. Mm-hmm. I 100 percent agree with you that, yes, we need more representation in movies. Mm-hmm. A great example of this is Monkey Man, the movie that just came out, uh, produced by Jordan Peele. That was a whole like. I don't know a tremendous amount about it, if I'm being honest, yeah, yeah. but it was like an Indian dude who was yeah. like, like, but it's like very much so his story, right? Like that's a representation of their culture. What I don't like is taking pre-existing characters and then race swapping them just for the person, of put just for the reason of putting a token black character in there, because I feel like that does more damage than it needs to, because all you're doing is you're pitting people that like the original character against the new person because they're just different and it's not the same thing but then it gets taken as well you just hate black people no it's they're just different things why don't we just tell new stories we don't have to yeah. rely on old things tell new story give better representation why are we like recycling like that's like yeah we, we do so much recycling. like i get okay i understand recycling in some regards if it's paying homage sure or it's something awesome but if it's just for the sake of making money <sighs> It's stupid. Like Disney. Yeah. Dude, like the the live action movies, I have not. Why? Why? I will say Disney made a comment about that. I think it was like last year, but Disney made a comment saying that moving forward, they are going to focus their movies on the story and making sure that they're making good movies instead of trying to tell a message. And I was like, thank you. That's what we fucking wanted the I, whole time. We can, They can have new stories. Yeah. It's just that they're worried because they're worried they don't make as much money. Fucking greedy pigs. It, yeah, it literally take a like chance. That. Like we really need chances nowadays, man. Like we do. Like one movie in particular, Holdovers. Holdover, great chance. Great fucking movie. Great chance like, taken. I'm, I'm cool with like historical movies that are placed in that time period, made made that way. Like that's cool. Yeah. At least it's something fresh, something new that feels old. Like I love that. What if they fucking made a fully just 2D animation movie again? Oh, God. Like they did paper. Like why don't they do that? That'd be awesome. That'd be goaded as That'd fuck. That'd be so. It would cool. take time, but it would probably take less time than making fucking CGI. D- you were talking and about something with a great plot. I, I want to mention this to you. I actually don't know if you I've ever talked to you about this. This is off the topic of animation and movie. It's more on the topic of paper animation. You know, the game Cuphead. Yeah. Did you know that game? Yeah. Did you know that all of the animations in that game were done on paper? Are you serious? Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. They did it all old school animation style. That's fucking and then they awesome. just scanned and random rendered him in. That's cool. It was awesome. Yeah. I love that. It's so cool. And you really see it. Like you can see how much character and heart that game has. So I love it. It started as a Kickstarter and just blew up. It's awesome. 
That's fucking awesome. Shout out Cuphead, man. Yeah, really cool game. The music is really cool. Is cool. The music is really cool. Um, but another, another game where it's like the holdovers, as in it's like trying to do an old school thing yeah. in a modern age, and like telling a modern story. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how Cuphead is a modern story. Yeah. I guess I, I get yeah. two cups fighting I monsters. Would... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, we're not taking a lot of risks these days and we're recycling. Well, we stuff. are. Not People us. aren't. No, sorry. Corporations like they should. That's why they should be listening to us. That's also why I feel like the more independent YouTube esque creator aspect. That's why that's popping off so hard because that's who's taking risks. Yeah, exactly. And it. it yeah, I think it's so cool. I love that we've been able to see the heart of creativity being born through the creator and not through the fucking corporation that they have to go through. It is rather messed up. I agree. And well, that's not messed up. That's cool. I mean, like, I mean, like the corporation. Oh, yeah. Like, the fact that like, it, you know what it is? Hmm. It's it's, it's it's a system that's been in place for a long time and just hasn't been cycled out yet. It's like cable TV. Yeah. Well, cable TV is only it's out the door. It is. This is some crazy shit. The only reason cable TV is still around is because of the pharmaceutical industry. That is not like not. Not kind of. That is the only reason why they make up. This is not an exaggeration. They make up fact check me on this because like I could be wrong. I am like pretty sure it is like 90 to 80 percent of all television advertisements is pharmaceutical industry. When you learn that fact, next time you watch TV, you will be flabbergasted. It is damn near almost only pharmaceutical commercials. Also, America is one of the only countries where it is legal to promote the pharmaceutical industry on TV. Everywhere else, it's illegal. It's about 75%. 75%. Other shit's like tied and like cereal. <laughs> yeah, that, yes, actually, that's very accurate. Pretty much stuff that they just advertise to old Fruit people. Loops. Yeah. So, well, no, I don't even know how much they advertise, I guess, on like kids channels and stuff. But like, yeah. no, Toys. people really aren't on cable anymore. It's all streaming. Yeah. Which is interesting because streaming, unless you pay the lower tier. You know, OK, so this is funny. So the way we watch Son of the Mask is we yeah. watch it free with ads. And yeah. We're like, all right. Fuck it. Let's just watch that. Yeah. And then we watch it. And Lady Gaga has a fucking uh, pharmaceutical. Like, yeah, that was weird. She was just talking over it while she was playing. Pi- yeah. She's playing piano, but she was talking over like a narration over her playing music. I it was thought- for a, like a headache ad, like a headache pill. ad. That was yeah. weird. It was weird. It, like, it, like, regardless, like, I'm not even trying to pin anything in, in Lady Gaga. It was just a, a weird commercial. It was weird. She's weird. She probably, that's probably why she's doing this Joker movie. I'm excited, but I'm, I'm hesitant. I'm a, little, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to be honest with you. I Do you anxiety. think it's going to be a musical? I, I 100% think it's going to be a musical. Really? Yeah. I'm not a, uh, here's my thing. I like musicals. I'm a little fucking fruity, I guess, but a zesty. Uh, a little, I'm a little zesty, I guess. But uh, no, I fucking love musicals. That's, I just grew up with my mom doing that because uh, we, we would always watch, watch musicals. You know, musicals have always been like, uh, I, know, like I just think some are good. And like, I'm a musical person. So all, that's weird. In all fairness, I do not see you growing up in your household you saying i think i'm gonna put on a musical i don't see that going over well in your house growing up it was me it was me my brother and my dad so like yeah a lot of, a lot of testosterone in that house. yeah just straight yeah, testosterone pretty much it's kind of crazy actually you're kind of a wild animal yeah a little bit <laughs> like, you're like a fucking warthog just fucking let out on the town it's it, yeah they, they shouldn't have let me out <laughs> i feel like um like that would you say that you never should have been let out the penitentiary possibly ice cube oh it was an ice cube bar continue sorry um musicals oh yeah so musicals never i mean i like grease yeah grease is cool grease is cool grease i remember seeing grease for the first time i saw it on the drive-in drive-in movie theaters are fucking slept on goaded we're lucky because we have one near us i like, know we can just like one of the few aren't there like not a lot anymore i feel yeah, like they're they, going away yeah i mean they took them down and shit i mean like it's more like self-made like ours in particular is like the goaded version it's yeah. like a huge screen fucking just like an amazing place they have great popcorn oh my god <sighs> they're pop- dude. i want to go are they dude. open at night <laughs> there's only like 300 left Wow, three hundred. That's sad. In America, too. God, there's more McDonald's. I will this, say, shout out the Harvest Moon Drive-In. I don't even care if we're shout. You know, I'll put that spot up. We don't live there. Put them on. 
<laughs> fucking go to the Harvest Moon drive-in, bro. That listen, hey, Harvest Moon, if you want to help a some, put, put up one of our tra- we can make a trailer for Harvest Moon. Like, hey, go watch the No Man's Land podcast. That we need to do that. That can, would be can hilarious. We get a paid ad. Yeah, we will totally. We will totally. Let's go do find that. out. God, oh, I just love their popcorn so much. I do love their popcorn. It's so oh, good. it's so good. Also, I want to know. Yeah, I want the I want the audience to let us know. I, I've had an idea for this, and I've kind of been wanting to pitch it to you. And I yeah. think we've kind of loosely talked about it. I th- I would love to start getting into some, like some like sketch comedy stuff here on No Man's Land. Oh, I agree. I don't know if it fits into the like. I don't know if we it would it wouldn't be in the podcast, but I think since we're just no man's land i mean we just are no man's land yeah, right like we can do whatever we want here like i i feel like we could put out episodic type sketch shorts and i i, I like that idea i agree we could definitely start like small and do some like really cool stuff like i i i'd like to do that that'd be yeah. fun i think let us know in the comments if you guys want to see some sketch comedy from us because like we'll totally do like we're obviously gonna be always putting out the podcast every week every like, tuesday let us cook and you know what if you if, if let us cook let us cook on something for you guys and we'll put it out and like if you ever want to expect something from us just always let us cook and just understand we're, that we're, we're doing stuff we, we we're here for you guys yeah we like, really we really are like we are i just i'm excited i want to build one of the coolest communities possible me too because i feel like we can really put a positive force in the world. And I feel like we can make a lot of a difference with it. Even as dumb as our fucking podcast is. Cause I, yeah, we, we're we, fucking we're, numbskulls. We are crazy. Like we're not here to like, we're not here to give you news. We're not here to provide you with real facts and real facts. <laughs> I'm going to be honest because like, we're here to lie. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're here to tell you what we know. We're here to tell you what we know off the top of our head. Obviously, we're going to have fact checks on we're some just here, stuff. We're just here to We're chill, here to man. talk. And we're, like, here. we're not going to be reliant just completely on our phone and our, 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 our just stuff. We're here to talk and have an amazing time. That's what, what I really want. You know what I really want to do? I want to help people enjoy life. Yeah. I, because I feel like everyone out there, it's so easy to make people because it, you know what? It's clickable to fucking scare people, yeah. but it just makes people feel worse. But I feel like we can we, just. Put that positive light. Talk out there, the shit. Man. Go out, like break a couple boundaries. Talk about some serious topics, but also get racial. Yeah, get racial. <laughs> get racial. Man. Talk about the problems of racism in our country. The racism that's just. Can we do a race tier list? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, never mind. Obvious. Okay. Do I have to answer that? Is no. That part of my no. Job? Don't that don't answer that. <laughs> Let's start with F tier. <laughs> White. <laughs> I, on a, you know, I, I, I like being white. I, 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 I appreciate I will say it, it does have flaws. Oh. A lot of flaws. Oh, yeah. We've been like. We like, burn like, really easily. Yeah. Sensitive palates. Yeah. We can't like, you know. We bruise. We just love mayonnaise. I don't get that. I hate mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. Oh, god. my God. I love Maybe it. I'm black. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Just looking at you. Is I there, can tell. Yeah. By my melanated skin. <laughs> I love may- mayo, man. Fucking yeah, you're white. So good. Yeah, I mean, not me. <laughs> I am a brother. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should stop. That that's a good place to stop. We're gonna stop on Ethan's black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, thank it, you for coming to No Man's Land, everybody. We love having me. you here. We appreciate y'all. Hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank it's, you. It's Thank been you fun. Let us know if you like it. I don't think we went too far. I don't, I don't think we did. I think we didn't go far enough. Let's get Let crazy. Let us know in the comments. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.